Tomb Raider Underworld, the series' first 7th gen console release, which nowadays you can get on PC for pretty cheap. But even so, is it worth your time? Hi, I'm Buzzin1, and in this Tomb Raider Underworld review, I hope to help you decide whether to pick this game up or just let it rot in the dusty crypt of forgotten previous gen schlock. <laughs> So in case you didn't know, there are like 15 Tomb Raider games, and those are just the games in the main series. There are also a few games in which franchise mascot Lara Croft is the playable main character, but which don't actually bear the trademark Tomb Raider name and logo. So basically it goes like this. Tomb Raider debuted in 96 and had a positive reception, followed by a couple of sequels. And sometime thereafter, developer Core Design started to milk it a little, and no, here let's try to avoid all those jokes that have been done a million times before. Anyway, in an awkward spate of poorly executed cash cow money grab titles later, once the series had all but faded into obscurity in the early noughties, publisher Eidos transferred Lara's development to Crystal Dynamics, who've continued to craft Croft up until the most recent release, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in 2018. Anyway, Crystal Dynamics should be given credit for resuscitating this otherwise would have been. Would have been, you know, as in would be has been. Anyway, they resuscitated Lara, the otherwise would be has been. And they did it by releasing the renowned Tomb Raider trilogy of the mid noughties comprising Legend in 2006, Anniversary in 2007, and Underworld in 2008. And so Underworld, the third entry in that trilogy, is the game we're going to talk about today. And just to be clear, that's Underworld world, not underwear. If you search Tomb Raider underwear and the internet led you here by mistake, well then, sorry to disappoint you, but as I said, we're really trying to steer clear of those jokes because they've already been done so many times before, and well, everyone already knows that the whole thing with Lara is that she's, well, Lara. And you know, that's not all. The skimpy, ladies, I'm talking to you, don't try this at home outfits, I mean. She can also do stuff. She can shimmy up slender columns. She can back up a motorcycle. She can grab holds and climb up walls. Did you ever read that novel Deliverance and notice the metaphor he uses for when he climbs up the cliff after he'd been injured? Yay, reading. That was actually high school summer reading and I still remember that particular metaphor. But that's what Lara does. She dredges up all these ideas and associations from your most distant and primal memories. And appropriately so, because she's an archaeologist by training. Clearly similar to early Germanic design. So she's good at dredging up old things. Oh, and by the way, she's also fabulously wealthy. <laughs> inheritance. So the Crofts are like one of those 19th century families who were so rich they wound up taking up science and became naturalists, which I guess is an admirable thing to do if you got both a lot of money and a lot of free time. Beats playing golf for goodness sake. Oh, but let's be honest though, golf is so brazenly nouveau riche. I mean, could you imagine being out there swinging your little club and fraternizing with all those self-made men? Give me a break. <laughs> so it's a game about archaeology. Would you hand me that toothbrush? I think I found an arrowhead. Wait, no, it's just an ordinary rock. And then like three hours later, oh, here's a shard of what was once a shallow clay bowl that only people with 10 years of specialist training can distinguish from a random clump of mud. Well, fortunately for players, this ain't your run-of-the-mill dig site. Lara, given her social privilege, I suppose, has been able to skip past all that sifting through the dirt stuff right down to the heroic and inspiring nexus of what the discipline of archaeology is really all about. Single-handedly plundering ancient ruins for magical relics which glow menacingly and bestow on their carrier superhuman abilities and indiscriminately gunning down anyone who gets in your way, regardless of species. Ah! Yeah, that's right, you kill a lot of animals in this game, and also people, but people are animals too. Or was that animals are people too? Anyway, it doesn't matter because he basically just gunned down anything that moves. I didn't feel so bad when it was the arachnids or the reptiles, both uncharacteristically overgrown and aggressive. But when it came to the rather whimsical dual wielding of semi-automatic pistols against a den of endangered tigers, well, I had to stop eating meat for a while, and it's not like I typically eat cat or anything, but you know what I mean, it's just the principle. No, I've never eaten a cat, much less dual-wielded pistols against one, nor do I intend to, just so you know. But I guess all the woman on animal violence is for the greater good. Lara's mission is nothing less than, get this, saving the world from annihilation. And as you know, you can't make an omelet without popping a cap and a couple of innocent mammals. With all the cliched sort of writing people complain about in movies nowadays, you'd almost think it's because some venture-backed internet startup has been marketing some kind of ready-made solution to aspiring and even seasoned screenwriters. You know, you're a writer, you're working on your script, and you just can't come up with any good ideas for a plausible villain. So you sign up for a monthly subscription to badguyinajar.com and you get your very first bad guy in a jar for free. So you take him out of the jar, plug him into your script, and presto, ready to start filming on that next Avengers sequel. 
Well, that's just ridiculous. There's no such thing as bad guy in a jar. I know because I googled it and all it said was something about Jar Jar Binks revealed as Supreme Leader Snoke. Fine, scoff all you like, but Tomb Raider Underworld actually has a bad guy in a jar, literally. Her name's Natla and she's introduced in a previous game in the trilogy and they even stuck a pair of bat wings on her, you know, just to keep you scratching your head in case you hadn't played those other games in the trilogy yet. Okay, so as you've probably already deduced, the story and writing in this game are abysmal, but so abysmal as to come off as intentionally abysmal, so it's okay. It's actually kind of fun, but it's total nonsense and so I don't want to get into it too much here because it's also ludicrous. But all you need to know is the plot is that Lara travels the globe on her yacht, collecting the magical artifacts necessary to eventually confront and defeat her nemesis Natla and thereby save the world at the very last moment. A couple of added bonuses, you get a bunch of Norse mythology references in case you're interested in Norse mythology. The characters all speak in the rhetoric of professional wrestlers, you know, if you're into the professional wrestling thing. If pulling out these artifacts always brings you here, what will happen if I'm already here? Maybe you'll go to hell. The first two locations are actually a completely unnecessary flashback sequence, and Lara even gets beat up by her own mute thug of a doppelganger. Ah! So it's a total mess. But honestly, nobody goes into a Tomb Raider game expecting Dostoevsky. It's really all about the gameplay, and Underworld does not fail to deliver on the series' characteristic blend of combat, puzzle solving, exploration, and platforming. So the combat. Ever play Ratchet and Clank? Underworld's basically like Ratchet and Clank, but you get infinite ammo with the pistols. So you lock onto an enemy with the left trigger, hold down the right trigger to fire on them continuously, and then you mash the jump button to flip and dodge past their return fire, slowly circling around them until they're dead. Or you can just toss a grenade at them and blow them up quick. So not a lot of depth there. You can kick people if you get close enough, which I found myself doing quite often because I got such a kick out of it, ha ha ha, but admittedly it's hard to know when you're in range. There's an adrenaline thing where you can slow down time and deal extra damage by hitting R3, but I didn't really use that except by accident. And then the game mixes things up a bit once you get the Thor hammer. There's that level where you return to the ship and you just start swinging for the fences and the enemies fly off into the sea. And then there's that mechanic where you can hop onto the motorcycle and grind enemies to death by turning donuts on them. Yeah, kick him when he's down. And all that's pretty fun for a while, but at the end of the day, this isn't a combat-focused game. There's no bow, there's no sniping, there's no stealth, there's no weapon management, none of that stuff. So on top of the limited combat, there are the puzzles. The lame, insulting puzzles. I mean, these are ancient temples built at enormous social cost to house priceless relics, and the puzzles were apparently supposed to serve as locks to keep out would-be thieves. But they're so simple that even people who do reviews for 10-year-old games on YouTube can figure them out without too much trouble. So you get the circles here in the water level, you get the reflective fans in Thailand, you get the stained glass silhouette thing in Croft Manor, you get the concentric rings in the Mayan temple, you know, stuff like that. But to be fair, when you're playing this for the first time, the puzzles give you that nice break in the routine of the platforming and exploration that make up most of what you do in this game, even if they are pretty easy to figure out. I mean, the fact that they're easy means you can more or less quickly solve them and then move on, so I don't want to be too harsh on the puzzles because while they might be woefully implausible from a historical and architectural perspective, gameplay-wise they're fine. So let's move on to the platforming and exploration, which is Underworld's meat and potatoes, and this is where the game really shines. So all the tombs Lara raids are like giant puzzles. You gotta look around to figure out what you need to do, but equally important, you gotta figure out how to get to the places you wanna look around in. You know what I mean? You can't just walk from point A to point B. You're in some ancient ruin temple abandoned for millennia and so there's no convenient path to get anywhere. You might have to shimmy up one column and then jump onto the ledge of a nearby wall and then pull yourself up and walk a balance beam and then use your grapple to swing yourself to a distant rooftop. Things like that. So you gotta explore the temple to figure out which switches you need to flip, levers you need to pull, artifacts you need to collect, and so on, but just finding the path to where you want to go next is a challenge in itself. And so the game plays kind of slow, but it's this rhythmical, hypnotizing kind of slow. With a bit of practice, you figure out the implicit rules of where to jump and what to expect next, and you get into a sort of flow, which is a lot of fun. You will get stuck on occasion though because you just can't come up with what the game's asking you to do, but it can be quite rewarding when you do finally figure it out and progress to the next area. Anyway, you can pick this one up for PC at around 9 bucks on Steam, and it goes for around 250 or so when it's on sale. If you're into the whole exploration and puzzle solving thing, I'd definitely recommend it, especially at that sale price. Just put it on your list in the meantime, you know? So once again, I'm Buzzin1. If you've made it this far, well, I guess I did something right here. Anyway, if you got something out of this review, would you kindly click that like button? If you want to see more stuff like this, I got some other gaming content on my channel page. Click on that enthusiastic looking dog in the circle below this video to peruse my channel at your leisure. And if you happen to find some other stuff you like on there, think about subscribing. I would appreciate it. Anyway, until next time, thanks so much for watching.